In the beginning, I guess we were talking about a lot of cryptozoological ideas, of like uh, what could we bring along for this uh, crazy mocha campaign? Because we've already done work with like transcendental meditation and uh, robots and aliens and all manner of strange creatures. And Met Andy through um, a mutual friend. He came into the office and we sat down and started talking about animatronics and robots. And I got to tell you, it was it was. A cool thing hearing the concept of chubs. The concept that, that Jim gave me was a big blue monkey type character. And, and he further explained it as if the uh, character was a little bit slow, a um, bit of a bit of an oaf. <laughs> to say the least. But uh, you know, crooked teeth, eyes that don't exactly focus on anything, very kind of uh, slow, but lovable at the same time. I had just done like a small, very small sculpture like, you know, nothing of what it actually became. And um, I think that was more for, like, color and, like, where we wanted, you know, really to, to capture Chubbs in terms of, yeah, in terms of color and texture. And they, uh, the students took that and really just went to town working on, you know, two-dimensional um, drawings and sketches and everything like that for the concept. Uh, they brought those in, and then from that, you know, we whittled it down what we liked, what we didn't like. Um, what worked, what was feasible, what wasn't, and from that they, you know, they uh, they made smaller sculptures, maquettes, things like that, and created, just kept on creating from those. Um, the scope that we were looking for, the the, the size of the project, really, um, we needed to to pull in some other people. I approached the Art Institute, and uh, they were uh, very supportive in us actually developing a class, a studio class, where. Um, in this case, seven students were able to uh, be dedicated with me on this project. The students themselves were, uh, were able to work on a project for a client in the real world. One of the things that we, we really want to push for is um, not a, a, a life within the Art Institute, or we don't want their education to be solely wrapped up in their own projects. And so this was a great opportunity for them to, one, work as a team and as a group, but specifically work with a client that, that had a very specific uh, need. Working with Andy and the students, uh, he led that team perfectly, like uh, in terms of creativity and what he really, I think, brought out the most in them. Uh, we started uh, doing hand castings and arm castings, and uh, this was a, basically a frame of reference for our arm sculptures. Uh, Chubbs had dexterous hands. He needed to be able to hold a cup of coffee. He then went in ahead and did his a life cast of his uh, shoulders and head. In some cases you would use an oil-based clay, but we used a water-based clay this time. It was a much faster medium. Um, it's a potter's clay, basically. So uh, think of it as a little bit thicker mud. And uh, we were able to uh, knock out a sculpture in about two or three days um, for the head. And once we got the mold of the head done specifically, we were able to make a uh, an underskull of the the sculpture, and this is basically the uh, the structure that holds up the shape of this this special foam skin that we develop. This is a spongy material, kind of like Halloween masks, except it's a more of a foam. So we uh, created a, a skin of that and uh, started mechanizing the head, uh, sculpted the teeth, and uh, really started fitting the, all of the mechanics and everything around Brian's face. Um, he had a special helmet that he popped on, and uh, and then everything fit around there. The uh, the arms and legs were relatively simple. Um, those were done with a more traditional Halloween uh, mask making approach, where we would use a, what's called a slush cast latex in the mold. We approached the body. Um, thankfully, um, Chubbs is wearing a hospital gown, and so we were uh, that afforded us. Uh, the luxury of using sheet foam for the body construction. Kelsey Gabriel and Chanel Himes were, uh, were instrumental in that construction. They really were able to knock out the form relatively quickly, but it gave us a nice basis um, and structure underneath the, the hospital gown. So um, that was, for the most part, um, unfinished um, underneath the, the hospital gown, but 
gave Chubbs the look we were, we were going for. Once we had nailed down the uh, mechanical design of the things that were moving on Chubbs, and, and those specifically, those movements were, um, Brian was the, the main performer in the suit, so we had a lot of movements naturally from, from Brian. The movements on the face, however, were, uh, uh, we used servo motors in the head and used a remote control um, system for that. Uh, we had motors in the jaw that would make the mouth open and close. The, uh, the lips also had a few movements um, just to give some articulation in the mouth. And then we also had subtle movements in the brow area just to give him some a little bit more emotion. We did a um, technique, uh, a f interesting technique where we, um, we painted it with a rubberized paint, the skin with a rubberized paint, and then used um, acrylic inks um, alcohol-based acrylic inks on that skin and it gave a really neat modeling translucent look to the skin. Chubbs was amazing. Uh, a little freakishly amazing actually. Didn't expect him to be that lifelike uh, especially once Brian had the suit on uh, and the eyes were blended. It was really <laughs> it was hard to distinguish between that you were talking to an animatronic creature and a real person. I actually thought it came out even better than I could have expected. I mean, it was a lot of fun. The, I was curious how the reactions would be too from Chubbs to play off of, and it was actually difficult to maintain myself sometimes because it was so funny. My head is a bit clouded in terms of the production. I was really tired. Jim did a, Jim did a great job of. Uh, directing the performance throughout the shoot. Um, he had a very clear-cut um, plan in terms of what we would be shooting, and we actually shot quite a bit, and uh, that was nice to, to experience. The, the, that flow went well, but uh, also it was, it was really cool for the students to see something that was going pretty much without a hitch. It went very smoothly. I told Andy and I told the students directly that, you know, I just want you to be as creative as possible. I don't want... Uh, you know, we'll give you a few like pointers, but really just to bring everything that you can, you know, to the table and to create like a character that is uh, fun and memorable and to have a good time doing it.